Okay, so um, one of the things, if you've seen the movie The Day After Tomorrow, um, is that Dennis Quaid, I think, in The Day After Tomorrow? Um, he is a paleoclimatologist, and um, what he does is, uh, the opening scene is where he is at the, um, I can't remember which pole it is, but he is getting ice cores to study past climates. That's what a paleoclimatologist does, is it studies past climates. Um, now, the information about what climates used to be actually gets kind of tricky um, because humans haven't been around all that long. So we have to use what we call proxy data, and that is, like the slide says, indirect data to kind of deduce what previous climates were. So in, I have a slide coming up on it with it, but talk about ice cores, but so Anyway, so that's what the, the character was doing. I think Jack is his name. So proxy data. It's looking at um, information we can um, look at to glean what uh, climates were in the past. So one of the things that we can do is actually um, look at, take a core of seafloor and look at seafloor sediment. Now what we're counting on with regard to seafloor sediment is that it has deposited in layers. And the oldest, excuse me, the newest layer on top going down to the oldest layer on the bottom. So it's kind of like an ice core, but you get a seafloor sediment core. Now, one of the things, there's multiple things, but one of the things we can do is look at the isotopic, um, oxygen isotopic information that's been incorporated in these shells of these, these um, little organisms that have lived and died. And as it turns out, um, if there is a fair bit of what we call the isotope 18 um, for oxygen, oxygen 18 isotope, then that would suggest that, um, let me see, 18, that would suggest that uh, there was a relatively uh, cold period during that time. So ice ages, you have more um, of this isotope. Um, during warm, warmer times on warmer climates, you have less of this isotope. So here is a gizmo that would reach down to get a core of the sediment um, on the ocean floor. So ice cores are, um, again, what this character Jack was doing in the day after tomorrow, what he was getting, and a couple of different things. With the ice cores, again, it's layered, so the bottom of the ice core would be the oldest going up to the most recent. Um, layer of ice and one of the things that that we can do is get is understand what sort of volcanic activity there was going on at that time um, another thing is we can look for trapped gases um, some of this carbon dioxide concentration um, the carbon dioxide in the earth's atmosphere how do we know how concentrated it was way back um, you know millions of years ago well from data just like this so carbon dioxide, for instance, or, or gases, greenhouse gases, can be measured trapped in ice cores. These are some neat pictures showing you a guy working, it might be a guy, it might be a girl, working on an ice core. Um, these are multiple ice cores being stored here. And I kind of remember, again, the day, movie The Day After Tomorrow, where he was in like this storage, this cold um, 